Good morning, everyone. It's Bob Branch, the pastor at the Springs Community Church, and I want to welcome you to this morning's edition of the Daily Devo. We've been talking about this way of reorienting our lives and orienting ourselves toward God through the Lord's Prayer, through the Our Father, and how those themes actually have this centering and focusing effect on our lives if we're willing to submit our lives to them. But we're at this, and I think you can get stuck with this very first one, Our Father, because for all of us, Father has such a sort of a giant payload of expectations and hurts and frustrations and everything because we have within us already a definition of Father already written. And so when we're trying to overwrite that with some other data, if you will, sometimes that can be very frustrating. And so I talked about this idea of of basically reclaiming Abba and our relationship with God as Papa, as Father, this intimate family, child to father kind of relationship. And we're talking, we talked about removing the obstacles to be able to own God as father and to pray this prayer with some real vigor and substance and consistency over a, of a period of time. I want to tell you, if you do this, your life will change. If you orient yourself to God as father in the pure sense, in the biblical sense, it will change you. It has changed me over the years. And I'm, as I've said, I'm on a long-term sort of ramp up of reclaiming and changing my views of God. So it's a long-term commitment in this whole thing. But God is so generous and so good in this. So what I want to talk to you about this morning is basically, I think that there's some retraining that's necessary, that we need to retrain our souls to orient ourselves toward God as Father. Now, how do you do that? Well, I think that I talked about removing the obstacles of forgiving and some of those different kind of things in our last post. But today I want to just challenge you to do some particular pyrotechniques in being able to do this. The first thing I want to ask you to do is when you pray, like Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 5, when he says, when you pray, go into your room, shut the door and pray to your father who hears you in secret and your father who hears in secret will reward you. And then he goes into the Lord's Prayer from there. But the first thing I want to ask you to do is to start thanking him for his love. This is the way that we retrain our soul, that we reorient our souls toward God as father, as who he is, is we start thanking you, father, I'm incredibly grateful. I'm so thankful that you love me. Ah, oh, thank you for your love. Thank you that your love is pure, that it's not like anything on earth that I have ever experienced before. Thank you that I have seen it purely in Jesus. Thank you. And we start to reorient ourselves by thanking God for who he is, thanking God for how he loves us, thanking God for his love. You start thanking and you just get your thanker going. Thanksgiving is very powerful. Secondly, I want to encourage you to say, to affirm and to agree with God and his love. And I, we've done this as a church from time to time where I've had people just take a big, deep breath. <sighs> you love me. And to begin to affirm first person, person to person with God, that you love me, Father. You love me. And we affirm and we agree with him in his love because part of the reason that our old baggage tends to be projected onto God is because we haven't really decided in many cases that we agree with what God has revealed about himself. Instead, we, re we choose to agree with our past, with our hurts, with our failed expectations, etc. You love me. And I will do that. Sometimes I'll do that for a solid minute. Now, if you do this for a minute, it will feel like a week because it takes a long time. But you are orienting your heart. You are agreeing with the God who loves you that he loves you. And I think that there's something about doing that aloud and with some slower breathing. I think that's really important. So you thank him. You affirm him. You agree with what God has said. And thirdly, that you surrender then to it. That's part of what the sigh is all about, is I am surrendering to him and his love. Oh, Lord, I know I can't do anything to make you love me more than you already do. 
Oh, would you awaken me to this love? Would you awaken my soul to the fact of how extravagantly and how powerfully I have been loved and I am loved in the present tense? You are loved. And this love completely changes. It changes everything. If this gets a hold of you, you, be, you become secure no matter what situation that you're going through in your life. And so uh, that's the, the, the third thing. Thank him for it, affirm and agree with him, surrender to it. And then I want to say that the, the fourth thing that I would do almost on a daily basis, kind of working with John 5, 19, that I don't do anything Jesus says except for what I do the Father doing for everything that the Father does, the Son does also. The Son shows the Son, the, the Father shows the Son all that he's doing and the Son follows suit. And so I want to orient my day, not just religiously, un, uh, un, uh, God is actually involved in everything. He's involved in everything in your work. If you're a salesperson, he's involved in all the sales stuff. If you're a student, all of your school stuff, God's involved. God's involved with everything. So he, there's nothing that escapes his attention. He's involved with everything. He's doing something and whatever you're doing. And I just would say to him, Lord, I want to lock arms in partnership with you. I want to partner with you in whatever that you're doing today. I delight to do this. And when Jesus talks about this partnership that he has with the Father, it's a complete and utter delight. It's a complete, just an ongoing dialogue. He doesn't stop and close his eyes, you know, and stop everything he's doing and bow his head. He just keeps in dialogue with his Father. And he does it sometimes aloud, but most of the time just internally. He's just in dialogue. Oh, what's going on there, Father? Oh, that's really interesting. What's up with that? Hey, what about the dove? Oh, wow. Okay, Holy Spirit, that's awesome. And then that's that's the, the first thing is thank him. The second thing is agree with him. And the fourth thing is surrender to his, his, to his love for you. The fourth is to lock arms in partnership with a God of love who's doing love works through you. And then the last thing is to come under that, to submit into God's fatherly authority. Now, one of the things that Father actually says in a Middle Eastern and in a biblical sense is that God is a father who has authority in our lives. So when he says something, we pay attention because he has our best in mind. He's in this constant partnership with us. He loves us. He's joining with us. But we actually need to submit to him, not just surrender to his love, but surrender to his leadership and say, okay, Father, whatever that you want me want to do, really, I'm interested. And I have found, and I've been doing this for years and years and years and years, and I want to tell you that as I look for, like Jesus did, and I find what the Father's doing, it is the e-ticket ride. It is the best of life working with it this way. It might be just one thing that you see God doing and you join in with that day. It might be 50 things. It might be somewhere in between. Who knows? But as you orient yourself and as you retrain your soul toward Abba, Papa, your Father in heaven, that when you reorient your soul to him and you begin to pray, you begin to thank, you begin to agree, you begin to surrender, you begin to partner, you submit to his leadership, all of this stuff, his kingdom purposes become active in you and they become active in every arena, in all of your relationships, in everything that you do, in your studying, in your time alone, in your recreating, in your exercising, everything. He's involved in everything because he loves you. And so do I. And I'm so glad that you turned in today. I'm praying for you, but I, I want to just continue to direct us toward this fundamental idea that as we orient ourselves, as we retrain our souls, as we build our lives around God as Father, and we let the Lord's Prayer begin to focus us on what is truly meaningful in life, we will find, and you will find, something of the grand adventure of what God has for you. And I'm praying for you, and I'm so glad that you tuned in. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Again, I love you. God bless you.